Hi, I'm Nicholas from Ratings.com. Today we'll be doing a review of the LG G2 OLED. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. We bought and tested the 65 inch model and we expect the other sizes to perform similarly. This TV is the successor to the LG G1. It sits above the LG C2 in LG's 2022 OLED lineup. The LG G2 has a unique design, which is what the Gallery Series models are known for. It's an extremely thin TV meant to sit flush against the wall, and it has very thin borders. It doesn't actually come with a stand. Instead, it has a dedicated slim wall mount that's meant for the TV to sit flush against the wall. You could still use a third-party wall mount, but it won't look as nice. LG sells a stand separately if you want to place it on a TV stand, and we used third-party feet during our testing. There are inputs that are both side-facing and downward-facing. With the TV wall mounted, you can still access the inputs by pulling out the TV. There's even a clip for cable management in the back. It comes with four HDMI ports that each have HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, which is great for console gamers. There's also an eARC port, so you can connect a receiver and pass lossless Dolby Atmos audio. However, it doesn't support DTS-X signals. Many Blu-rays support DTS-X, so you'll need to connect your Blu-ray player directly to the receiver to get the best sound possible. The TV's build quality is fantastic, which is what you expect from a premium TV. It's made of high quality metals and is solid throughout. There's a bit of flex on the back panel, but it's not too much of a concern. Now onto our test results. We'll start with the contrast. A high contrast ratio results in deep, dark blacks, which is good if you want to watch movies in a dark room like a home theater environment. Like any OLED, it has a near infinite contrast ratio, resulting in perfect black levels. Because OLEDs also turn each pixel on and off and don't have a backlight, they don't have a local dimming feature. There's no blooming around bright objects, and it looks fantastic in dark rooms. On the other hand, if you want to use the TV in a bright room, a high peak brightness is important to overcome glare. OLEDs aren't known to be very bright, but this is actually the brightest OLED we've tested so far. It's right in line with what LG advertised as the brightest OLED they've made. It has good peak brightness in SDR, and it's enough to fight glare with a few lights around. It gets dimmer with large areas of bright colors because of its automatic brightness limiter. This means that the screen doesn't look as bright when watching some sports like hockey, but it still gets bright with other content. As for HDR, it reaches over 1000 nits of peak brightness in real content. This is simply exceptional for an OLED display and small highlights really stand out. Like in SDR, the screen gets dimmer with larger highlights. This means that it looks best when there's a small highlight on a dark background, like in a star field. Also important for a bright room is good reflection handling. The LG G2 has fantastic reflection handling, and it handles even strong light sources well. There is a slight purple tint with strong light sources due to the anti-reflective coating. Still, you won't have any issues if you're watching bright content in a bright room. If you have a wide seating arrangement or like to watch TV with family and friends, a good viewing angle helps make sure no one sees washed out colors or crushed details. Luckily, it has a very wide viewing angle. This means the image looks the same whether you're watching from directly in front or from the sides. An overall uniform screen brightness and color is important when watching sports or playing video games. This avoids the appearance of clouding known as dirty screen effect. The LG G2 has excellent overall gray uniformity, but there are some issues with it. There's a bit of vignetting towards the corners, and there's a pink tint on the left side of the screen. This seems to be a common issue with LG's new OLED panels, so it's not a defect to our unit. There aren't any issues with a grid-like pattern that some people saw in past OLEDs, and there's no Venetian blind effect either. There are some very faint vertical lines that you see in near dark images. This is typical of OLEDs, but you only notice them if you really look for it. The black uniformity is perfect because each pixel turns itself on and off, so there's no blooming. A lot of people care that a TV has good colors. In this case, 
the TV has an excellent color gamut. It has near perfect coverage of the DCI P3 color space used in most HDR content. It also has decent coverage of the wider Rec 2020 color space. However, the tone mapping is a bit off, so saturated colors aren't the most accurate. Speaking of which, it has great out of the box accuracy, but the gamma is a bit high, causing most scenes to look too dark. Some TVs struggle to display smooth gradients, so even when watching a movie with a sunset, some banding can be visible. The LG G2 has excellent gradient handling, but it's not as good as some other OLEDs from Sony. There's a bit of banding, especially with darker greens, that you might notice while watching real content. Before we move on to some of the gaming features, let's talk about one more part about OLEDs. They do have the risk of permanent burn-in when exposed to the same static elements over time, like if you're using it as a PC monitor or leave it on the same news channel all day. The new OLED panels are advertised to have less burn-in risk, but we don't know for sure how much of a difference they make. When playing video games, a fast response time is important for the clearest image without distracting blur. Like any OLED, the G2 has a near instant response time. This means there's no motion blur trail behind fast moving objects. Because of the way the display uses a sample and hold method to show fast moving objects, there's still a bit of persistence blur. A low input lag is also important for a responsive feel when playing video games, and thankfully the G2 is fantastic for this. You won't notice any delay while gaming. Even though the 60Hz input lag is a bit increased compared to last year's G1, gaming still feels very responsive. Speaking of gaming, this TV supports HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. This means you could play 4K at 120Hz games from the PS5 and Xbox Series X without issue. It does support variable refresh rates too, which is important for a tear-free gaming experience. The sound of this TV is decent and about typical of many TVs. It's actually worse than the speakers on the LG G1 because it doesn't produce much bass and it doesn't get as loud. Still, it's decent if you're watching shows with the built-in speakers. If you want the best sound experience, then get a sound bar or a home theater system. Lastly, let's talk about the smart features. LG advertises that it comes with the latest version of the WebOS platform. They call it WebOS 22 to signify the year, but the menu on RTV labels it as version 7.1.0. Regardless of the title, it's an updated version of WebOS 6 from last year. It now supports user profiles so you can customize the homepage for different users in your household. There are a ton of apps you could download through the App Store. However, like any modern TV, there are ads throughout the interface. It comes with the same version as the Magic Remote from last year, which has a point and press feature, so you can easily select your favorite apps or change settings. This brings us to the main question, should you buy this TV? First off, it's a nice improvement from OLED models last year, and it's great to see that OLEDs are starting to get brighter. If you're deciding whether to buy the G1 or G2, this one is definitely the better performing TV, and HDR content looks incredible. Even if you're comparing it to the Sony A90J OLED from last year, highlights pop more on the G2. However, its gradient handling still isn't as good, so there's a bit of banding. Unfortunately, this is an expensive TV and it doesn't come with a stand. The LG C2 costs even less, has a stand, and delivers nearly the same picture quality with good peak brightness in SDR and HDR. The TVs are very similar overall and you should only get the G2 over the C2 if you want to use the dedicated wall mount to make it sit flush against the wall.